Yo, what's going on guys? It's Philly, and we're back today doing Chapter 5, where we're going to take on Miklan, Sylvain's brother, um, who has been corrupted by the Relic Weapon, the Lance of Ruin. Uh, this chapter could be kind of hard, but I'm going to go over um, sort of a method that makes it a lot easier to do. Um, honestly, this is the first time I'm going to be doing this method. Um, I've always done it, the, in my opinion, the harder way. Uh, it's still completely doable, but this method is going to make it quite a bit easier. Uh, a couple things to go over here, though, before we actually get into the chapter. Yup. We recruited this absolute beast. In my opinion, this is... Catherine is the dragon of this game. And now, it's not its not exactly the same as, you know, a traditional dragon. Um, but she comes... You could recruit her actually the chapter before this, although she can't take part in chapter four, which is why I recruited her now. Uh, she just comes so much better than anyone else on my team. Like, if we just compare her stats to Dimitri, so if we look at like the relevant stats, she has 41 HP, 20 strength, um, 21 speed, 15 defense. Now we look at Dimitri, 17 strength or 38 uh, HP, so that's lower. 17 strength, that's lower. 19 speed, that's lower. Even the defense is lower. The only thing Dimitri really has is charm. Uh, Catherine has a really low charm stat of 6. But, yeah, basically, she she's just so good. And also, not to mention, she comes in an advanced class. A, a class of Swordmaster, which you can't unlock on most characters until level 20. Um, as you can see, she's level 11. She actually joined at level 9 if you recruit her in Chapter 5 like I did. Um, I did some auxiliary battles, which I'll get into in a bit. And that's why her level is 11 now. But yeah, um, she's so much better than any character that you could probably or even possibly have at this point. Unless you really put all of your experience into, say, Byleth or Dimitri at this point. So, she's going to make the game so much easier. And you can recruit her um, this early on any route uh, except for Black Eagles. So, if you're playing Golden Deer or Blue Lions... And you want to make the game easier on yourself, I 100% recommend getting Catherine. Um, again, at uh, you could get her in Chapter 4, but she can't take part in the Chapter 4 missions. So I always would recommend getting her at Chapter 5, like I did. She makes the game so much easier. There's another recruitment that's going to happen in the next chapter. I'll talk about that when I get to it, and that'll also make the game a lot easier. Uh, yeah, so this... I 100% recommend. I, I can't say enough good things about Catherine. She's so good. Um, okay. The next thing I, I want to talk about here is, obviously she's level 11. I did some auxiliary battles because of the fact that you can actually unlock the merchant in Chapter 5 by doing the auxiliary battle. I believe it's called Clearing the Way. Um, and the merchant is so important to your professor ranks because once you unlock that, you can actually buy bait for fishing. Um... So I did that in week two of the last month, and I basically used Catherine to solo both of the auxiliary battles I did. I, I have two available because I'm B-ranked professor level now, but um, so I, I did a second one, even though I really only needed to do the one. I didn't want to waste the, the battle point. Um, so I had basically, I had Catherine solo both of those maps, and yeah, that's why she's level 11. Um, I did sort of, if you want to say cheese, um, in order to master the Swordmaster class and the uh, Noble class, which is why she has HP plus 5. Um, if you want to know how I did that, I might rele release a video later. Basically, you, you just trap an archer with four of your units and then put uh, the one unit that you want to master their classes on in range of the archer and just have them shoot at you over and over until you master your classes. I can release a video on that later if uh, people are interested. I know a lot of people are going to say that's cheese, but honestly, um, one of the reasons that I'm doing this playthrough is to kind of show people that um, Maddening Mode can actually be done relatively easily. And uh, there's a bunch of tools that the game offers you without DLC uh, that you can use to make your life so much easier. One of them, obviously, recruiting Catherine this early. But another one is the ability to just master classes super quickly because there's so many class mastery skills that make a huge difference in how easy or how hard the game's going to be. Um, so yeah, th there's nothing 
cheating about this because really it's something that the game offers and I'm just taking advantage of it. You might call it cheese, you might call it cheap or whatever, but like I said, in the end, uh, it's just something that I wanted to note that if you're struggling with maddening mode, take advantage of it because, again, the class mastery skills and combat arts are going to make a huge difference in how easy it is to complete certain maps. So, yeah, uh, I think with that out of the way, um, yeah, this is Catherine. <laughs> she has Sword Fair because, again, she's in the Sword Master class. She has Sword Crit plus 10. Her personal ability is actually really good. Um, if she has no Battalion or um, the Battalion Endurance is at zero, she gets uh, basically plus 5 protection and resilience, which is really good. Um, I do have a Battalion equipped because... Uh, yeah, the Saros Pegasus Company is, is just a really good uh, battalion anyway. She gets plus four physical attack, two protection, so she's only losing out on three, but she does get the five resilience, and she also gets five charm. Uh, she also comes with A rank in swords, which is incredible. So, yeah, she actually has the Axe Breaker skill, making her very hard to hit against Axe users, which is nice. Um, yeah, that's all I need to go over with her. Uh, I did make another recruit in Cyril. This is, I believe, the earliest you can get him is Chapter 5. I've done that. And as you can see, similar to Catherine... Um, oh, wait, this is not actually that. I've, I've boosted his bow rank to C+, so he has the Point Blank Folly uh, skill. This is, you know, super good. Um, basically, it's a brave attack for any bow, but you have to be attacking at one range. It's super good, though. You get two attacks. That's why I've got him with a Steel Bow+. Plus. Um, yeah, I forged a Steel Bow for him. So yeah, he's going to be using this for maximum damage as well. Um, I did the same thing that I did with Catherine, where I basically used him as an adjutant on Catherine when I was doing those missions. So I was able to master the HP plus 5 skill, or the commoner class for the HP plus 5 skill. And then I moved him into the fighter class, because that's the only uh, beginner class that he was qualified for. Um... Basically, you can see I've got a lot of forged weapons on him. I think we did unlock the forge in this chapter. And uh, with the merchant unlocked, you can actually buy smithing stones. So I did a lot of that. You're going to see a lot of members of my team have forged weapons now. Especially forged training weapons because it actually reduces their weight. Um, so yeah, people can use a lot of the training weapons at their full attack speed now, which is really nice. Um, other changes to the team, I'm not bringing Ingrid. I've got her uh, equipped, I think, on Catherine as a adjutant. But that's about it. No other changes, really. It's it's basically these two. Oh, uh, another big one is that Annette now has rally speed. So, got her to C plus authority, and yeah. This is going to be amazing. She now has rally res, rally speed, and her personal gives rally strength, basically. So, Annette, giga rally bot, here we come. Uh, I've also upgraded, or uh, I guess promoted, Byleth into the Thief class. She had access to this and the Mercenary class. I just decided to go with Thief because it's a little bit extra speed. And uh, Dimitri into the Lord class uh, because I do want to focus on his sword. I could have also promoted him into Thief or Mercenary, but the Lord class has this charm ability, which is very good. Adjacent allies deal plus three damage, so super good. And his stats were are still like you can see them they're they're still very good. Uh, again, I've cooked the deified fish meal twice, so everyone on my team has plus two speed, uh, as well as plus two defense, and I believe plus two dex. I, I know it gives three stat boosts. It's defense speed, and it might be something else. But yeah, uh, speed and defense going to be the most important ones here. Anyway, I think enough talking, and time to go into this chapter. Uh, here you're going to see that we've got my main man, Gilbert, uh, as a green unit. Um, he's not going to do much in this chapter. He's pretty much going to hang around here. There's eventually going to be reinforcements coming from this side. And he's probably just going to get himself killed pretty quickly. Although he doesn't actually die in this map. He just retreats. So it's fine to just let him die. Like I was saying earlier, there is like sort of an easy strat to this map. And it revolves around these archers here. So I'm going to highlight their range right at the start, and the reason being is that if you step in their range, so if I step in, in any of these red tiles, and you you end your turn there, so basically one of these archers can attack, as soon as these archers start moving, all of the units around them are going to start moving too, uh, including like everything over here. 
So basically, if I step in one of these red tiles and this archer starts moving, all of these units are going to start running around the tower here and probably somewhere around here or here. I'm going to have to fight basically every unit on this map um, aside from the boss. And that is tough. You can do it, like I said uh, earlier. I have done done it that way every single time that I've played this map on Maddening Mode before. Because um, normally what I would do is I would have somebody at level 10 already and they'd be in the Archer class. So they have 3 range and they have the ability to retaliate on these uh, Archers. And so I would stand in these spots on purpose with my Archers so that I could pick these Archers off. Um, but yeah, then like I said, you're going to have to fight all of the enemies at once. Basically, if you don't step in these red tiles and end your turn there, um, you're good to go. None of these enemies are going to start moving until you get into their attack range. So it makes it much more manageable. You're fighting smaller groups of enemies. Okay, that being said, um, let's do this map. So I think the main goal here is just going to be get Cyril to level 10. Only one level to go. It's not too bad. Um, Catherine has 18 attack speed with an iron sword plus and an iron shield equipped. So she still doubles. I, I want her to not double here because I want to feed some of these kills to Cyril. So let's see. Yeah. So she won't double with a Steel Sword Plus, but she'll weaken them nicely. Um, and Cyril will be able to just body them. Put Dimitri beside her to give her the plus three damage. Hopefully she doesn't actually one-shot them. I didn't check that, but we'll see what happens. Um, your units do start here in a very good formation to use Stride. But I find that Stride really, on the first turn here, it really only helps you kill these two enemies right away. Uh, so it's, in my opinion, it's not really worth it. Here we go. Again, uh, I didn't actually forget to rally with Annette this time. I don't want to rally Catherine because then she'll double with the Seal Sword and she'll for sure murder these guys. As you can see, she does 31 damage. And they can't hit her basically because she has that Axe Breaker ability. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of amazing. Catherine is a beast. So let's look here. Yeah, they actually had a 36% chance of hitting her. It's... what can I say? Um, so I do want to work on Cyril's Lance rank, and that's because he does get, later on, that same skill that Dedu has, which is Vengeance. So I would like him to unlock that at some point. I don't think I super need to take advantage of Byleth's ability here to get extra experience. I'm going to be giving Cyril a lot of kills on the first map. Let's just check out Point Blank Volley how much damage I can do here. I can actually do 32 damage. Not quite enough to one-shot yet, but with like one point of strength or with a rally from Annette, uh, Cyril can actually one-round these guys. Uh, who else do I want to be feeding kills to? I guess um, Dedu and Felix are both level 9. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to move Catherine forward because she is a beast. We're going to want Ash coming over here because uh, he's going to get this chest for us although whoever kills this guy does get a chest key might as well save the chest keys for later when Ash is not part of my team anymore like I said there will be reinforcements coming from basically the starting area and there they are they're all going to attack Gilbert I don't have a problem with that he's just going to die if those mages weren't there Gilbert would survive quite a while uh, I guess I guess the thieves do six times too. He actually hit that thief, which is amazing. I guess we could put uh, some people in range of these thieves here. They're obviously going to go for my units over Gilbert because this man has uh, 18 protection, uh, which is actually less than Catherine. <laughs> that is broken. So I'm just going to have Catherine go over here. Uh, she's probably just going to murder this guy. We'll have Dimitri take care of this thief. Again, with uh, Ash coming in to take that chest eventually. Um, these thieves only have 9 attack speed, which is insane. So if I actually rally here on Cyril, Thank you. I can get Cyril to double. Yeah, so 9 attack speed and Cyril has 15 with the Iron Lance Plus equipped, so... Cyril can actually double. I don't know if he's going to kill, but 
We'll leave some units hanging back. I'll push Dedu forward. I'm not going to need all my units to deal with those reinforcements. Um, but honestly, Catherine's fine on her own. She could almost solo this map, probably. If I took a battalion off her, she could definitely solo this map. She'd get an extra, uh, basically, five protection. And yeah, you as you can see, Cyril is about to level up right away. <laughs> and Gilbert decides to steal the kill from me. What? <laughs> Come on, man. But, um, yeah, something you're going to see right away. Look at that. And that's why these brave combat arts are some of the best things that you can unlock in this game. And that's the reason that I spent my first uh, couple weeks of tutoring on Cyril on bows, is just so that I had access to stuff like this. Now, there is a second wave of reinforcements, but I don't believe they spawn until, like, turn 6 or something. I'm only on, what, turn 2? Turn 4. Okay, so I think I have... I got a couple of turns left before anything like that happens. You know, I might as well heal up. And then we'll have Cyril go body this guy. And level up. Yeah, uh, I agree with you, Cyril. That was not a good level up. Uh, it looks like he's still going to go for Gilbert because he can actually get a kill on Gilbert. And that's what I want. I want Gilbert to leave this map as soon as possible because I don't want him stepping in one of these red tiles and aggroing all those enemies. Um, like I said, I, I do want to do this map the, I guess, easy way. So 12 attack speed here. I think Dimitri can probably just body this guy. Yeah, here's 17 attack speed, so... Uh, this mage wants to go for Dedu, but we're not going to give him the chance. Catherine taking two damage. I don't think that really <laughs> matters at all to her. <laughs> you can already see, like, just by um, what kind of damage and stuff Catherine's doing that she is she's broken. I don't. I think I could move Sylvain forward here. I think I'm going to leave the rest of my units back just a bit. They'll catch up with Catherine in a bit because obviously I do have Mercedes here uh, with the Stride Gambit. So I think she'll be okay. This guy decides to try and use a Gambit on Dimitri. And there goes Gilbert. So let's see what I can do here. And this is going to set up a kill for Cyril, where he's actually standing right beside Byleth, so he'll get that experience boost. He doesn't really need the kills now, but I would like to kind of level him just a bit. Because his his base stats aren't, they're not terrible. I mean, he has 14 speed and 9 defense, but obviously those are boosted by the meals that I cooked. So he really only has 12 speed and 7 defense. Uh, and when you look at someone like Byleth, who's actually the same level as him, her stats are much better. So I would like to level Cyril up a bit. He does have that aptitude skill, which, I mean, it's normally really good in Fire Emblem games, but they kind of made his growths really low in order to, like, compensate with that. So, honestly, the aptitude skill kind of just makes his growth rates similar to the rest of your units, which, in my opinion, is just kind of a waste of a personal skill. But that's just what they decided to do, so. I can't actually one-round this guy. Dimitri, but that's okay. I'm actually just one tile of movement short uh, for Ash to be able to kill him, and I don't want Ash to get in a range because that guy will probably just murder Ash. So now, once you get past this um, area, there's going to be thieves spawning here, and they actually spawn on the start of enemy phase, which means they can move after they spawn. It's a nasty trick, because this is the first time you've seen it in this game. Uh, in the previous difficulties, there are no ambush spawns like that. And um, you haven't seen it quite yet in this difficulty. I could bring Dedu forward, but I kind of just want Catherine to body those things on her own. <laughs> Not worth. I was hoping he could uh, t 
take this thief out so that I could move forward with Dimitri, but it's fine. I can wait till next turn. Thank you. Uh, oh yeah. Mercedes is actually, she was level, it looks like she was probably level 5 before this map, and I think I forgot to promote her. That's really unfortunate, because if you promote her into the monk class, she actually gets double the uses of heal and physic. <laughs> so I may have messed up a little bit there. I don't know if this tile is actually going to spawn those thieves, or if I have to move one further. Here comes that second wave of reinforcements I was talking about. It's the exact same as the first. It's not too much of an issue. I'm just going to keep moving forward. I can take on those thieves uh, when they eventually catch up to me. Again, I'm kind of be I'm going to be sitting around this area for a couple turns just while um, while Catherine takes care of those reinforcements up here. So yeah, if I move into this tile, that should cause thieves to spawn from here. There they are, and as you can see, they spawn and they move right away. Okay, I guess they're not moving right away because these other enemies are coming towards me, but... <laughs> and Catherine just doesn't care. Uh, this is the reason I decided to put Ingrid as a Ajutan on her. It's going to level Ingrid up, although I don't really know that I need her leveled up. But... Might as well do it. So, as you can see, like... There's really no threat here. I'm going to move Catherine a little bit closer just so that both of the thieves will attack her on the next turn. This one's going to go for Dedu. It's going to do 4 times 2 which is actually going to be 0 times 2. Oh, what's his attack speed? I can actually make it so he doesn't double dead. It doesn't matter because it's 0. So, Yeah, <laughs> I kind of thought he would, he would go and attack Catherine. Catherine's completely fine. As you can see, he does 4 damage. So even if she takes like 4 times 8, <laughs> she's still not going to die. She's, like I said, she's just broken. Um, Is he going to gambit? He looks like he's actually going to attack Zero rather than trying to gambit. So I don't know if I should rally him or not. Is he still going to attack rather than gambiting? It looks like he is. I'm wondering if I if I rally him, if that's going to change the Thieves' mind. It doesn't look like it did. Didn't he have 17 attack speed before with this weapon? Well, now he's only got 15, so it doesn't matter. He's not going to double, uh, but he's going to do more damage, so it's still worth rallying. Bring Dimitri over here in case we need his help dealing with the Thieves. And Sylvain is basically just a heal bot at this point. This is what a Actually, on that note, um, if you're not playing Blue Lions, uh, no matter what route you're playing, if you're playing Black Eagles or if you're playing Golden Deer or Blue Lions, I mean, it doesn't really apply to Blue Lions because you already have Sylvain, but I would always recommend um, recruiting Sylvain for this chapter if you're playing any of the other routes. Pretty good level up for Catherine. HP, strength, and speed. But yeah, uh, the reason for that is that if you recruit Sylvain uh, before this chapter, you'll actually get the relic weapon from Miklan, assuming you choose to not return it to Rhea when she asks you in the at the beginning of the next chapter. And yeah, so you get another relic weapon at chapter 5, and the Lance of Ruin is it has insanely high might it's a very good weapon so i would i would definitely recommend doing that if you don't have sylvain in your party you won't actually be able to get that weapon until you complete sylvain's paralogue which happens a little bit later in the game all right so with catherine just eliminating all of the enemies up there it's definitely safe to push forward once i get rid of these enemies down here so Byleth, now that she's in a intermediate class, has five movement. So she can actually get over here and take care of this guy, hopefully. So let's see if I actually have enough firepower to take all these guys out right now. Dimitri's got the first one. I'm 
not hurt too bad. And point blank volley is enough to take care of this guy. Uh, now I'm gonna have to. Oh, I can actually get over here. Uh, even if I rally, that wouldn't be enough. But how much attack speed do I have with the Sword of Creator? Oh, I could probably trade over a Iron Sword Plus tour as well. From Felix. Uh, now I need to take care of this guy before I rally. So I'll do that with Mercedes. Now I can rally with Annette. Again, I didn't want to do that before because I would have to rally from one of the spaces that's in the archer's range. And I didn't want to do that. Um, so now the Iron Sword Plus is enough to actually double and kill. She hit a crest activation anyway. Um, so she would have killed with the training sword, but obviously I'm not going to rely on that. Is there anyone I can heal with Sylvain? Nope. The rest of my team, I'll push forward. I could probably use a stride within one of the next few turns to try and get my units to catch up to Catherine. Because there's, like, this map does take a long time to clear just if you're not using warp strats, which you can do. Um, but yeah, if you're not using warp strats, it takes a long time to clear just because it takes quite a while to uh, actually just get up the map. I'll leave Sylvain back just so I can heal one of my units on the next turn with him. So I think what I'm going to do is set up for a stride here. It's not necessary to stride here, but I would like to do so. Um, just so that they can catch up to Catherine. That's basically the reason. It's not necessary, but otherwise I just have to wait and it's going to take longer to clear the turn or clear the map. So standing in this space will aggro everyone, so I don't really want to do that. I'm just going to go over here. I can actually use this time to heal Catherine up with a concoction that I bought. Or I might have got from the Amiibo Gazebo. I don't actually know if you can buy concoctions at this point. It's another thing you can do. Oh, what am I doing? I just moved out of the stride formation. Well, Annette still gets hit by the stride, but Dimitri does not anymore, so... <laughs> Thank you. Uh, he's still he's still ahead of the rest of the group, so it's fine. And there are no more reinfor reinforcements on this map after you deal with those two thieves, or the four thieves, I guess, that uh, I had Catherine deal with. So you don't have to worry about any ambushes or anything. But yeah, as you can see, my turns now are basically just moving people forward. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to move Catherine forward. She does have 11 charm because the gambit... Uh, it showed 6 earlier, but that was not counting the gambit boost. Um, or the battalion boost. The battalion that I have equipped on her gives her 5 charm. That being said, it's still going to be like a 55% chance or so, I think. If I kind of understand how charm works. But like, this guy's going to have a pretty good chance of gambiting her, and I don't want that to happen. It's not like she's going to die regardless, but... I don't think I'm going to wait. I think, uh... And I think also 14 attack speed should still... Oh yeah, he's got zero attack speed. So I might as well go in with the weapon that's most likely to actually kill this guy. Okay, he did try the gambit, but he missed, thankfully. And yes, the Archer is one of the few units on this map that can actually do damage to Catherine because of Poison Strike. But I don't care about that. I'm going to get rid of this guy with his Gambit. And we got Ygritte to level 5. Which means I can push her into a beginner class now. Uh, this guy wants to take on Dedu, which is kind of nice. So I'll move Dedu here. And I can move my other units around him. Maybe I'll attack Felix from here. Uh, but Felix can't retaliate, so I'd rather him hit Dedu. We'll move everyone else around Dedu, um, and then I can feed the kill to somebody else who actually needs it on the next turn. Because as you can see, with 
the way that I'm using Catherine, I'm basically just using her to clear this map mostly by herself. Um, yeah, she's not going to need too much extra experience. Just because her stats are already so much better than the rest of the, the units on my team. Uh, the Arch is going to go for Catherine now for some reason. But you know what? That's fine. She's so good. And she's still getting level ups. That's the thing. She's so much better than the rest of my team, but she's not getting reduced experience. And obviously that level up was pretty bad. But um, again, unlike other Jagan type units, I'm going to call them, um, she's not like them because she actually has real growth rates. Like uh, the, the traditional Jagan units have like really bad growth rates. And they're just there to kind of help get you through the early parts of the game. Catherine is going to remain on my team for the rest of the way. Aside from a few chapters that she actually can't partake in. Um, but yeah, she she's going to be valuable to my team for basically for the rest of this run. So, the Jagan comparison is not completely accurate. But it's probably the closest thing that you get in this game to a Jagan. So I'm going to want to send somebody down here because this guy actually does have an accuracy ring, which is a very useful item, especially in maddening mode where your hit rates are just quite a bit worse than they are in the other difficulty settings. Um, so I definitely do want to pick that up. Maybe we'll send Catherine that way and... Hmm. You know what, I'll send Dimitri that way because that guy does have a gambit. And I kind of want Dimitri to take that on just because he's got the highest charm on my team. So what I'm going to do is on the next turn, I'm actually going to trade the Armor Slayer over to Dimitri. Uh, he does have Sea Swords, so he is able to use the Armor Slayer. I'll bring him over here and that'll allow him probably just to one round this uh, Armored Knight. Again, just making sure to stay out of the red range here because I don't want to activate those archers. Although at this point, I've taken care of a lot of the enemies on this map, so it's probably fine. Catherine's the only one left to move. I'll... Yeah, I'll just move her forward and heal herself. Again, like I said, she's fine on this map by herself, so... So yeah, we'll have Dimitri... He's still got 12 attack speed. I'm assuming this thing has zero. That's correct. It's actually a Fortress Knight. Which is... That's a... Huh, that's interesting. Fortress Knight is not a class that you can unlock um, at level 9. And this guy's level 9. <laughs> so, kind of interesting. So right here... We have the chance of getting gambited, so I think I'm actually just going to stay out of attack range and I'm just going to wait for my units to catch up. In case Catherine gets gambited, I don't want everything to overwhelm anyone. Um, although Catherine's very unlikely to die on this map, it can happen, especially if she gets hit by a gambit. So I'll just play it a little bit slow. This map's going to be slow no matter what you do, unless you're warp strat or unless you're using the warp strats. This guy's going to go for an assault troop on Dimitri, but pretty low probability of that actually hitting. So I think now I can stand in range here. Uh, 50% chance of hitting with assault troop, so it's not too likely, but it's not unlikely either. Uh, I just don't want to put anyone behind Catherine in case she does actually get hit by that. Hopefully I can get Cyril up here. So like I said, I would like to get Cyril a couple of levels on this map. He's gotten a couple already, I think. Uh, oh, just one. Be nice if Mercedes could kind of catch up. Could use the healing. Oh, so Dimitri actually going to get hit by that 30% gambit. Nice dodge on the archer. So I got hit by the 30 and the 50, which is a little bit unlucky, but what can you do? I wonder if Dimitri can still one around this guy. Almost. 
Uh, he's gonna take 21 damage though. That's really brutal. <laughs> and since he doesn't actually want to round him, I don't want to take that 21. I don't know a vulnerary on me either. That could be a bad situation. He, whoa, and he can actually kill me on the next turn. Okay, I might have to rewind here. I did not expect that to happen at all. Because of that 30% hit. My only Physic user is too far back. I don't have a Dancer. I can't reach. She's also my Stride user, so I can't get anyone in range. Uh, even if I double that, that won't kill him. That will. So if I hit Dimitri's Combat Art, uh, that'll kill. But that is... Or I mean, Dimitri's Crest, that'll kill. But that's really not reliable. I can't use a Gambit back because of the fact that uh, I'm stunned. So we'll try this. If it doesn't work out, I'm going to Divine Pulse. Okay, so it didn't work out. So I'm going to Divine Pulse because I don't see any way that I can actually get out of this now. So I'm going to have to go back all the way to when Dimitri moved. Um, so I think what I'm going to do Ready when you are. is send a unit with him. What gambit does this guy actually have? Uh, it's Assault Troop, so it hits four spaces behind him, which is annoying. So Dimitri's still going to get hit here, but what I can do is I can attack with the Armor Slayer, which leaves him with like two HP or something, and then I can finish him off with Cyril. I'll crush them all. I can actually also manipulate the RNG um, and maybe not get hit. But I don't want to do that just because it's kind of like cheating. <laughs> it's not cheating technically because the game gives you Divine Pulse, but I don't want to use Divine Pulse like that. What should I do? So I'm just going to basically do everything pretty much the exact same as I did before the Divine Pulse. And see how it works out this time. Dimitri's still going to get hit. This is still going to happen. Catherine's still going to get hit by the next Gambit after dodging this Archer. Alright, so in this situation, I think I'm much better equipped. So I can leave him with 4 HP, and then assuming I can do 4 damage with the Steel Bow, I'm good to go. And this is also assuming I don't miss an 84. Which I didn't. So Cyril should be able to finish this guy off now, and we're good. I don't think I'm going to need this Seal Bow, and I don't. Uh, we'll leave that on Cyril and actually get send the uh, Vulnerary to the Convoy. Alright, so now how to deal with this group here. I don't have an Armor Slayer, but you know what? Ooh, Catherine actually doesn't kill this guy in one round because she's oh she's actually not nerfed uh, in strength anyway I do have magic available so and that's not really trained that much she can't do a lot of damage it would be nice to assault troop I could probably aggro these guys now although where does this archer hit? Oh wow, he hits he hits pretty good. I could use a combat art to swap Catherine, but that doesn't help because swap will put a guy here. I wanna if possible I would love to actually assault troop here. But it doesn't look like that's gonna happen. I can't actually heal Catherine, because uh, I can't get there to do so. Hmm. What's the best way to do this? Is that Archer going to kill Annette? 7 AS with 24 attack. No, she has 9 AS, so she's fine. And then we'll have Catherine take this guy out. 
Uh, I'm gonna do it with a combat art. Because I don't want to possibly take a counter attack and have Catherine maybe die on the next turn. Ooh, I can almost one round. I wonder with the Ruptured Heaven. Oh, I can't do enough damage. Felix can get there and kill him, though. Uh, and then, you know, the only problem is how do I take care of this Armored Knight? Uh, he'd be able to attack there. But I think that's fine. I don't think he can one-shot a net. He's got 28 attack. Uh, she does have 10 protection, so she's fine. Yeah, I think that might be the way I'm going to go here. If I equip the Sword of the Creator, I might be able to counterattack on the Archer that's attacking me. It just depends if he's attacking from 2 range or 3. He can actually attack from 2 range, so I wonder if he'll do that. I also could have activated a Crest there to kill him, but it's fine. And Felix is going to hit level 10. A ah, decent level up, speed and defense and charm. Looks like he's going to attack Felix because Felix can't counter attack. Oh, can Felix die? Did I just mess up again? Uh, 12 for 51. It's not that good of a hit rate, Dedu. I might have I might have effed up a little bit here. It really depends who attacks first. I guess we'll see what happens. Again, I do have Divine Pulse, <laughs> but I might I might have messed up here. Uh, 16. Let's do 12. Uh, 16 and 12 isn't actually enough to kill him. Uh, so it really depends who attacks first. And I probably can check that. Uh, it looks okay. So it actually looks like this guy's gonna attack first. If that's the case, I think I'm okay. Nope, the archer's coming first, and he missed, so I'm fine. Um, I could have died though. That guy actually missed too, which is interesting. <laughs> uh, Felix does have C and bows in case I don't remember if he did in the last chapter, which is why you got to see him counter attack there. Okay, so I did get a little bit lucky. But, you know, that's how Fire Emblem is. It's a game of numbers. I could give the kill to Annette. I do want to level her up because I want her to uh, at least be level 10 by the time we hit the time skip. And I know that's obviously um, quite a bit lower level than you would expect to be. But I, I just want her to be an adjutant for Gilbert, so... Uh, I'm not going to heal Dedu up in case I need vengeance a little bit later. Do I want to give this kill to Catherine? I mean, she's already gotten a couple levels this map. I should probably give this to Byleth if possible. Can do it this way. Be nice to get Dedu to level 10 at this map too. Not the greatest level up for Byleth. <laughs> Is her magic like similar to her strength now? Oh, it's not that not not that close yet. I still don't 100% know what I'm gonna do with Byleth in this run. Um, if she does decide to level a whole bunch of magic, I have no problem with uh, going with magic Byleth at all. So there's still quite a few enemies left. So I'll just keep doing it the way that I'm doing it. And again, this is... It's just always going to be a slow chapter, so... Unless you warp skip, which, again, I did say that's possible. Uh, I believe you do need Lysithia to do that, because I don't know if you can actually have Flinhart up to, like, A rank for warp at this point. So I, I believe at A faith, he does, that's when he gets warp, so... Uh, who's attacking here? It's a thief without a gambit with 12 AS. I don't think I can get a net over here to rally. Uh, 
12 AS, which means I can double with an iron sword. As you can see, the uh, the cooking of those meals that I did is extremely important. <laughs> it, it allows like my units to double when they wouldn't otherwise be doubling. So this looks like a nice gambit opportunity. 80% <laughs> chance. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Although, I I'm not sure if I'd be spoiling anything if I uh, if I said what I'm what I would like to save the gambits for. Um, so I'm just I'm not gonna say that. All all I'm saying is I might want to save my gambits for the end of this map. <laughs> but I have a lot left. That's the that's the first gambit I've had to use this entire time. So, uh, which is not the case if you do this like the hard way. Uh, well, the way that I normally do it. Uh, I would be I would have used a lot of gambits at this point already if I was doing it the hard way. This is a twenty percent chance to hit. I already got hit by a thirty, so I think this is pretty unlikely to happen. If I move into that range, he can actually hit there, so I don't want to do that. Dimitri's starting to catch up here, which is nice. Yes. Cyril's pretty far behind, um, but. Hopefully he has some involvement. The boss can give a lot of experience in this chapter, so I'm not too worried about getting Dedu forward to get extra kills and stuff. And again, I obviously do not want to put anyone behind Byleth in case that 20% hits. Which it obviously didn't, but you never know. So I could Gambit again here for fun. Uh, just so that my other units can catch up, and I might actually do that. Uh, he has, it says he has something I can steal, but it's just a vulnerary, and I get it anyway. Um, so this guy's going to go for a gambit. No, oh, he's actually going to go and attack Dedu, which is interesting. I might just leave Dedu there for that reason. Or I can just go kill him with Catherine. <laughs> Probably the easiest thing to do. Catherine can't get gambited now because uh, these guys are stunned and you can't use a gambit when you're stunned. So we'll just continue moving people forward. And hopefully Sylvain can actually get to level 5 as well this map. Uh, just so I have a little bit more healing power. So I don't believe I'm going to be picking up any other healers for a little bit yet. And there goes Ingrid to level 6. She's gotten 4 levels just by being an adjutant on this map. <laughs> Alright, so now it's time to move in into these archers ranges because I can actually I can just take them all on so I think we'll put Catherine in range give this kill to Felix because he stays out of range and everyone else can just move in so that they're ready to take on the archers on the next turn I might actually be able to hit a stride and just completely take out everything else here um I'm not quite sure about that though. I think I'll put a net here in case I do want to stride. Cyril's just not going to make it anywhere on time, so. As you can see, I don't even think I have a weapon equipped on Sylvain. I knew he wasn't going to be doing very much this chapter. She's got assembly, but I don't really want to use the gambits now. Uh, I think I could turn these ranges off. We'll leave those two on just so that we know where we're getting attacked from. But this should be fine. I don't think I actually need to use a gambit here, so might as well not. Save it for the boss if possibly needed. I can do like 17. You know what? I might be able to one-shot this guy with Vengeance. Ah, uh, we're pretty close, but not quite. Alright, well... Dimitri can go in here.
I think Bile is fine as long as I heal her. I kind of want to give this kill to Deadu though, so... Yeah, so we're going to heal... Oh, we can't. That's unfortunate. I think she could probably still take two hits, but I'm going to do it with Catherine just in case. Yeah, Catherine's completely fine. They're very unlikely to even hit her, but... Alrighty. Oops, what am I... Oh, no, sure. We'll rally just for support. <laughs> Now, I believe the boss does move on this map if you enter into his attack range. So we'll check that out now. There's a really easy way to kill the boss on this map. I might show that off just because I think it's funny. Oh, Byleth like one experience point away from leveling up there. <laughs> uh, is there any way that Dimitri doesn't kill this guy? Yes, there is. Iron Lance. Wow, Dedu doubles. <laughs> so there we go, Dedu's level 10. So I could just rush Catherine in and bring the boss towards me, but I want to do the funny strat. So you know I'm gonna I'm gonna just uh, waste a stride gambit here. I'm not gonna need it for the rest of this chapter, like actually need it. So I'm just gonna use it to get units closer to the boss, so that I can do the funny strat on the next turn and not just have to waste some turns walking forward. All right. So I guess uh, I don't really want Catherine to be killing the boss here, so. I don't know who I want to give the kill to. Okay, so funny strat. If you look, this guy is holding a one range weapon. It's the Lance of Ruin. It's a relic weapon. As you can see, it has 22 might. It's really scary. He has 44 attack. But um, if you know anything about this game, if you're holding a relic weapon and you do not have a crest, it could be any crest you want, but if you don't have any crest at all, which this guy does not, He's going to take 10 damage after each round of combat. And you can abuse this super hard by attacking him at range. So yes, Cyril does 2 damage or 0 times 2. I'll take the 2 damage. But he's going to take 10 damage. <laughs> Annette can actually do damage because she does magic damage. But, as you can see, he's down to 4 HP already. So now he's pretty much set up to get a kill on whoever I would like to. Uh, I guess Byleth's actually... Byleth or Felix is going to get it. And I don't think I need to give it to Felix because I don't plan on leveling up long term. So we'll just give it to Byleth. And yeah, as you can see, that's a very way, uh, easy way to take down the boss in this map. So... Uh, yeah, if you think I'm done with the chapter, here's where a little bit of a surprise happens. Like I said, I'm going to skip cutscenes, but basically the boss transforms into a demonic beast. <laughs> oh Alright. Uh, so yeah, if you didn't know that before watching this, um, well, I wish you luck if you're trying to play Maddening Mode first. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so this thing, I guess, I don't think we need to explain how Demonic Beast works because I would assume that most people watching this uh, have at least played the game on one of the lower difficulties already. But let's check out this guy's stats. 37 attack, 9 attack speed is not very scary, but 37 attack is quite high. He does have 1-2 range. All Demonic Beasts, as far as I know, have at least 1-2 range. Some of them have more than 1-2 range, and we'll see that later on in the playthrough, but he does have 1-2 range. So, with 37 attack, um, we're completely fine here. The only thing is we just kind of want to make sure that um, 
that we have a unit that can counterattack. So Cyril can take thirty, uh, take a thirty-seven. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rally Cyril. And again, the guy only had nine attack speed, so I need thirteen to double. I can't do it with the steel bow, but I can definitely do it with the iron bow. Uh, I'll put Dimitri beside him to get him some extra damage. We'll put Byleth beside him to give him extra experience. And we'll just crowd everyone in here. Because on the next turn, we're all going to be moving forward. Uh, I guess these two don't need to be in here because they're not going to do anything. <laughs> Cyril actually dodging. As you can see, that beast only had a 41% hit rate. Now, another thing... Oh man, Cyril, you're going to need to get better level ups than that if I want to make use of you in this playthrough. <laughs> another thing with the um, with the boss in this map, obviously, there's three health bars on this guy, so you basically get four boss kills. And that's, a, that's what I was saying earlier, where you get a lot of experience. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to Gambit. Not for the reason of breaking health bars, really. Uh, but just so that this this guy will attack Dimitri on the next turn. I could break all his health bars, or all his uh, barriers, right now. It's probably fine if I do so, but I don't think it's necessary. Demonic Beasts also have notoriously low um, luck and everything, and crit avoid in general. So yeah, you're, you're going to be able to do a lot of damage on them. Uh, through crits. As you can see, everyone has like a 20% crit rate, so... No, we'll just go with Catherine if she takes a kill here, which she does, because obviously Catherine's going to crit. What do you What do you think? <laughs> um, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Ingrid level 7 already, wow. Alright, one health bar down. Uh, the beast can counterattack now. Um, you can abuse this by attacking at 3 range. Uh, not sure what I want to do here. He's going to attack Dimitri at 2 range because he can move back here or up here to attack at 2 range. Which is a little bit unfortunate. Tempest Lance do more damage at this point. Oh, I can't. Oh, I can't use Tempest Lance with this Lance. I uh, don't no, vengeance does more. I can actually give the kill to Dedu. I don't want to do that though. I might do it this way. And again, I don't have to worry about any of my guys actually taking damage on the counter attack as long as they don't die from the counter attack. Um, because no matter what I do, he's going to attack Dimitri next turn. Uh, it looks like he is, basically you can see that glowing area, it looks like he's going to use his sort of gambit type thing. Um, so it actually hit Dimitri and Catherine, but they're completely fine. He might one-shot Annette, so... Oh, Annette doesn't have any wind spells left, so it doesn't matter. Uh, he doesn't actually one-shot, but Mercedes does zero damage, so... I think we're fine to leave this till next turn. As you can see, he does like an AoE sort of attack. You can't counterattack on that. Uh, it missed both Dimitri and Catherine. Uh, let's see. We've got Assault Troop here with Cyril. I would like to give the final kill on the boss to him, though, to hopefully get him another level up. We'll do this with Catherine. That'll actually pull the beast back because her gambit's the assembly gambit. Completely fine. Again, we're trying to set up a kill for Cyril here, so... Got a 16% chance of critting, but even if I crit, I don't think it's going to kill him. Uh, let's see here. That would be 39. I would have to crit twice to kill him. 
And that looks good. I think he's probably in range for Cyril to get a kill now. He is not. Interesting. This should do it, and I don't have a chance of critting. So now Cyril can get the kill. Uh, is there anything else I need to do? I might as well heal somebody and get some experience here. It actually did get a level up, so that was 100% worth it. That was a good level up too, although I don't really care for Mercedes leveling up too much. Um, again, she's not going to be used long term, but... And this will do it. Cyril's going to get another level up. Let's make it better than the last one you had, please. Uh, I mean, he got strength. <laughs> we'll, we'll be happy about that. It's over. Make one. And yeah, that is the end of Chapter 5. It took 27 turns, <laughs> so obviously a little bit of a longer one. But thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.